All information contained in this podcast is general in nature and does not consider your individual circumstances. You should consider the appropriateness of this information with regards to your individual objectives, financial situation and needs. Welcome to Sharing More Than The Sheets, a podcast to help you and your partner make better financial and lifestyle decisions so that you can both focus on the things that you love. I'm your host, Michael Curry, financial planner, green thumb, husband, and just dad. I want to talk about opportunity cost. Now, I first heard about the concept of opportunity cost back in high school, grade 10 economics, and we were talking about this particular term that I had never come across. Now, I'll give a big shout out to my economics teacher, Mrs. Cowper. If you're listening, Mrs. Cowper, thank you for being awesome. But just to go back to my original point, opportunity cost was a concept that just literally blew my mind. Now, I've found many definitions online, and I'm just going to read out the one that I think fits the description the best. And that is that opportunity cost is the potential loss from a missed opportunity, the result of choosing one alternative and foregoing another. As an example, if you were told that you could meet any celebrity in the world or any person in the world and have 10 minutes to sit with that person and talk to them and ask them any questions you wanted to, And if you chose to sit down with your next door neighbor, Jeff, to talk about his pet birds, while you had the opportunity to sit down with Arnold Schwarzenegger and ask him about his experiences doing movies and casting in movies and being Arnold Schwarzenegger, there is a very big opportunity cost, I think, in that situation. Now, some people might prefer to talk to their neighbor over Arnold Schwarzenegger, but for me, deciding to talk to my neighbor for 10 minutes when I had the opportunity to talk to Arnold Schwarzenegger, is a humongous opportunity cost, in my opinion. Now, for me as a financial advisor, I talk about this topic with clients a lot because sometimes they could be making financial decisions and they're trying to assess whether decision A or decision B is the most appropriate. Sometimes they could be life decisions, and I'll get into some of them in a moment because as a financial advisor, half of what we talk about is money, the other half is real life situations, real life dilemmas, real life scenarios. Yes, they relate to money indirectly most of the time, but our job is to talk to people about these things. And sometimes it's not clear. Sometimes while it may seem obvious to one person, it isn't to another. So let's start with work, starting with jobs. Now, when it comes to decision making, or even when it comes to assessing your current situation, it is very important to understand opportunity cost and to be aware of it. As an example, work, employment. If somebody is in a job that is paying them an average income and that person has the potential to be earning twice as much, then their opportunity cost is quite significant because that person could be earning twice as much income for a job that they are more than capable of doing. Another example, and I see this many times, is somebody will have a business, a client will have a business, and their business, it's okay, it's making money, but they could be making probably the same income working for someone. And in this situation, to me, the opportunity cost is the fact that this person could be earning the same income as an employee and not have all that extra stress. They could be spending all this extra time with their family. They could be spending all this extra time surfing or doing the things that they enjoy doing, yet they choose to go for option A. Now, it isn't always about the money. Some people choose to have a business for lifestyle or they choose to work in a job because they like their employees and the environment or the location of their job. So money shouldn't be the the main determining factor when looking at these things. But I just wanted to highlight these two examples because I do see it a lot and I usually have to remind my clients of it or or people that I meet, potential clients, even when I talk to them for the first time. I like to point these things out because over time we can get so used to something, we sort of forget what's out there. We feel like we can't do better or we don't deserve better or we shouldn't be in something better or that there isn't anything better. So it's always very important to be assessing this particular factor when it comes to work or having a business. The second one is health. Now, from a health perspective, you can choose to spend your weekends 
chilling on a couch all day, eating junk food, watching TV, or you can choose to eat healthy food and exercise, for example, or do something physical outside and socialize with other people. Now, there's a very significant opportunity cost, in my opinion, if you chose to just sit on the couch all day and do nothing but eat junk food, because there is the potential to be doing something that's a lot healthier for your body and something that is going to benefit you a lot more in the long run. There's a, there's a much bigger benefit. And by choosing option A of just chilling on the couch and eating junk food all day, you're missing out on that potential opportunity to be healthier. Now, again, it's easier said than done. And I'm not saying you should never sit on the couch and eat junk food, but I'm just trying to highlight that point. And, and this is important because, again, finances and health, and I've said this before, but finances and health, in my opinion, are two of the biggest issues that people neglect in their lives. And, and I know this because people are busy. People like to procrastinate. We, I should say, me included, like to procrastinate. We are busy. We have things that pop up in our lives. And we sometimes tend to focus on, you know, we tend to not focus on the big picture and not to look at these particular issues that we should be worrying about. The third one is money. So again, when I talk to clients and they have savings, for example, and they want to know what to do with those savings, they there are many different options. But just as an example, option A could be leave money in the bank and let it just sit there. Option B could be invest that money. And there is a significant opportunity cost in this situation. Now, this is assuming the investments produce profit and that your investments grow. And there's never a guarantee of that, of course, because nobody can control the markets and nobody has a crystal ball. But just assuming that there is growth and option B was to invest the money in a particular investment option, we'll say, where that money would have grown. And option A is leave the money in the bank. You can see the opportunity cost in that situation as well, um, because option A, you're essentially making no money. Option B, if you are making money, there's a there's a there's a cost, there's an opportunity cost that you're missing out on. And and I know this is common sense. However, it is a point that I'm regularly reminding my clients about as well, because when it comes to money, we make decisions based on what we emotionally feel is right. And sometimes that isn't the most logical decision. And sometimes we completely disregard opportunity cost. And we just think about what makes us happy, what makes us comfortable. Now, you should always make decisions that make you feel comfortable, but it is also important to think outside the box to consider opportunity cost. For me, even from recent experience, one of the biggest example, and probably the last example I'll give, is not outsourcing, so doing things yourself. Now, there's two examples I'll give you. The first one is getting things done around the house. Some people love painting. Me, I can't stand it. But let's say I love painting. And let's say I want to paint my house. And I choose to do it myself instead of paying someone. Now, assuming I'm not doing it because I actually want to paint, you know, so ignore the fact that I'm getting enjoyment out of it. If I'm deciding to paint my own house purely to save money, so I don't have to pay someone to come to my house and paint my house because hold on a sec, I know how to paint, I can paint my own house. There could be an opportunity cost because if somebody is a business owner or if they're an employee and they need to take time off work and let's say they don't have any annual leave, so there's going to be a loss of income, it doesn't make any financial sense to have a reduction of income over here so that you don't have to pay someone over there unless there's a really big difference, unless financially you are better off having a reduction of income. But again, I've seen so many scenarios where some will take days off work to to do things, to to, to, to renovate their house, for example, you know, to, to do things around the house or or to, to sometimes even when it comes to moving, they take time off work when they probably don't need to just so that they don't have to pay someone else to do it. But they're in a situation where if they had just worked and paid a professional, financially, they actually would have been better off. Sometimes, and most of the time, I should say, paying a professional, you end up with a much better outcome compared to doing it yourself as well. 
So again, this doesn't apply to every situation, but it's, it's again, a very, very important example of why opportunity cost should always be factored into decision making. And on the point of outsourcing, let's talk about financial advice as well. Now, yes, it costs money to get good financial advice from a good financial advisor that actually cares about you. And yes, if you choose not to get financial advice, you don't have to pay for it. So the benefit there is, hey, there's extra money sitting in your bank account, which you would have had to lose if you paid a financial advisor or any advisor for that point. Now, the opportunity cost, however, in my opinion, is humongous because financial advice, in my opinion, is probably one of the most beneficial bits of advice you'll ever get in your life because it won't just set you up, but it will potentially set up your family's future. It will set you on a good course to make smarter financial decisions for you and your family. It will avoid you, well, hopefully, it will re- we'll say it will reduce the, um, the possibility of making mistakes and costing, which, which will cost you money. So in my opinion, yes, you pay for financial advice, but the benefit outweighs the cost in many, many cases. So the opportunity cost of not getting advice is normally a lot higher than actually getting advice. And again, that counts to, and that, that relates to so many different outsourcing situations where, you know, you can pay a professional or you can seek advice on something, but if you don't, think of the mistakes that you can make or think of the, the, the performance that won't be as good. And that's, and this is why professional athletes pay big bucks sometimes to get the best possible training or to have the best mentors because they have someone there that can help them maximize their potential because not having them there would be an opportunity cost that they are not willing to forego if they want to be number one in their particular field. So a very basic point, once you know what opportunity cost is, it does not leave your mind. And once you actually understand it from a practical point of view, hopefully you'll be able to use it to evaluate particular decisions when you're in a scenario, when you're trying to choose between option A or option B or even C, D, E, and F. And if you can, if you can do it, if, if you can make these calculated decisions, whether it's a quick mental decision or whether it's something that you literally sit down and write out on paper or whether it's something you seek advice about and talk to someone about, you should be able to sleep well at night knowing that you've ticked the boxes and you've done the best possible thing you can to avoid the largest opportunity cost for you and your family. Thanks for joining us on sharing more than the sheets. Please make sure you subscribe to be updated with future episode releases and feel free to share this episode with any friends or family that you think it might benefit. Please visit us at sharingmorethanthesheets.com.au to submit questions or requests for future podcast topics. These podcasts have been brought to you by Better Financial Planning Australia. To book a 15-minute phone chat, visit betterfinancialplanning.com.au.